talk a little bit about how do we do deformity corrections uh, based on a 3D weight bearing CT scan. I work in a hospital in Antwerp in Belgium. We have a whole foot and ankle surgery team uh, taking care of our patients. So we know that ankle osteoarthritis is a, actually a very disabling condition. Um, it's comparable with hip and uh, knee osteoarthritis, but patients have more pain um, when they get it. They're also younger and they're more post-traumatic cases. And we treat our patients well, but if we try to think about our patients want to get, and if you see what they don't need, they're a little bit afraid of have stiffness and uh, when they have a, a reduction of daily activities. So if we want to treat uh, osteoarthritis, uh, you have to typically uh, the um, joint preserving strategies or the joint sacrificing strategies. So ma ma mainly patients come in an end stage and they will go for an ankle arthrodesis or an ankle prosthesis. And also we know that the, the ankle prosthesis is probably not the end uh, surgery. And then sometimes you have those difficult cases where you have a bilateral osteoarthritis, sometimes on one side already operated on, another side needs still some surgery. So why are we thinking about realignment surgery? So we try to preserve the joints um, and to shift load away from the more degenerate part of the, uh, of the joint to unload and to get a better activity for the patient again. So it's all about restoring the uh, joint biomechanics and to slow down the degenerative process. So if we can do it, it decreases pain and it improves function for the patient. In our service, we work with patient-specific guides um, it's already known, it's not a new technique, but most of those guides are segmented in a conventional non-weight-bearing CT scan. The novelty that we're trying to, to build in is to using weight-bearing CT scan. It's getting an imaging in a more physical condition of the foot and ankle. It gives precise alignment of the hind foot. And actually it's proven that there's a difference if you see patients standing um, on the weight-bearing CT scan, you see all those angles that are different in a non-weight-bearing and weight-bearing part of the CT scan. Um, and actually that means that it mimics a little bit more the, the clinical correct position uh, than a non-weight-bearing CT scan. Why we use, or when we use a, a dome shape uh, supramaliostotomy? Um, it's very technical, uh, demanding procedure. Um, you can always use it in congruent joints or when the core or the center of rotation is near the joint level and in big ferrous deformities. Um, it's a difficult surgery if you don't have any planning. Um, the technique can be very challenging and the rep reproductivity is very difficult sometimes. So uh, you need some guides to help you to make it a safe surgery. The downside is you always need a fibular osteotomy uh, to get joint congruency afterwards. We all know the center of rotation. So if you want to correct an alignment, the nearer you, you are to the center of rotation, the less displacements that you get in your, in your surgery. So that's why we want to aim, mainly if we, if we want to do a, a supramaliostomy, we aim to go to the, uh, to the uh, center of rotation. Um, and we're looking at some stages, so you, you look at the center of rotation, and then you look at joint congruency. You want that if your joint is congruent, you measure on, on a normal x-ray, you measure some angles, you, you measure the, the angle between the tibia plafond and the uh, axis of the tibia, and also the tail plafond and the uh, axis of the tibia. When you subtract them and you have a, a less than four degrees, you have a congruent joint. In those congruent joints, um, you can start uh, doing those dome osteotomies. If you want to uh, uh, positioning the virus valgus position of your hind foot, we use the uh, software that developed with uh, uh, Francois Linz, the tailors, to, the, to see what the virus and the valgus deformity is. And then you have your, your planning done. We know also if you want to do your surgery, it's not only about the osteotomy. You, al you also have to look at hold the joint, and sometimes you need additional procedures to uh, balance the joint so you have a very stable and balanced joint. So what you need sometimes is soft tissue balancing, but you, you also need bony procedures. If you have a, a very a virus deformity with a, with a steep first ray, you probably need a dorsiflexing osteotomy. But also in valgus angles, where you have a hypermobility first ray, sometimes you need a lapis procedure to bring down the, the, the first ray and get a stable first ray. Um, we also try to see at the level of the osteoarthritis, and therefore we use the, typically the Takakura uh, classification. 
And I will go in some, uh, some samples now. We have a 65-year-old man. He has a uh, uh, clinical uh, marked valgus, uh, virus sorry, with a swelling of the ankle joint. He's instable. He has a prographis gave a virus deformity um, with a weakness of the peroneal tendon. So we did our planning. When we measured our angles, uh, we printed out the, the ankle joint and then we planned, uh, uh, and I go into procedure later on the talk, we planned the, uh, um, the osteotomy you want to do. And then we make our guides uh, on the weight bearing CT scan. So you see the guide going onto the, uh, onto the bone. We d and that's also the planning. It's all computerized, it's printed out. Um, and the novelty also is when you, do, when you finish the osteotomy, you have a kind of a reduction guide that keeps the reduction in place. And this is the result afterwards. So you see that the, uh, the dome osteotomy, which is performed, nicely performed, you get a stable fixation. Because they had the, uh, a weakness and a cave of virus, we added a dorsiflexion osteotomy. And also uh, for an incongruent, for a um, uh, virus tuberosis in the calcaneum, we add a uh, cetosotomy to the calcaneum to align all the hind foot. The second case is a 48-year-old male, male, his right ankle, he's a trauma guy. His right ankle, he had an ankle instability with a progressive uh, virus of the ankle due to instability. Um, he had a failed lateral ligament surgery. So we did the same thing. We put him in, in our software. Uh, we measured the angles. Uh, we, we, we designed the dome, which we want to create. We uh, measured, uh, and then we printed out our guides, did the osteotomy. And this is the result also a nicely well-balanced joint, completely straight. Uh, other cases where sometimes you need it is probably in, in uh, uh, ankle replacement surgery. When an ankle replacement is, is positioned in a virus position or a valgus, it's a, it's a congruent joint because you have your, uh, you have your uh, tibia and your uh, talus inlay, which are parallel. So that's also a congruent joint, and that's very painful for the patient. So again, we put a, a patient in the software. Uh, we measured where we put with the, uh, where we want to do our dome. We performed our dome with a reduction guide, and it's also the planning uh, with the marked outcome. You see the x-ray afterwards, completely healed, and a nice balanced ankle prosthesis now. So how do we do it? We use the software from, from a Mimix and 3 d um, and we try to find uh, some points. We need a distal uh, center point, and we make an imaginary curve around the talus. And we find a reference point where we want to measure our, uh, our um, tibia plafond. Uh, we try to find the center of gravity of our tail, the center of gravity of our calcaneum. Then we make a kind of a calcaneal bisectory uh, with the, uh, uh, between the calcaneum crown point and the calcaneum gravity center. So we have really a, a continuous uh, reference point when we plan our, uh, our osteotomy. We define our three planes as well. Uh, the planes are, are defined by a typical tibial anatomical axis. And on an axial plane, it's a z-axis, uh, starting from the ground part of the calcaneum. And a, a sagittal plane, it's the ground contact point of the calcaneum with the center of the second metatarsal head. And the coronal plane is a ground contact point of the calcaneum and perpendicular to the sagittal and the uh, axial plane. So we have our uh, reference points, we have our planes, and then we're going to measure our angles that we need uh, to see the correction. And the crucial one is the lateral distal tibial angle, which is actually an angle between the tibial anatomical angle, uh, tibial anatomical axis, and the tibial tailor lateral joint line. Um, the other important one is the tibial vertical angle, and the tibial vertical angle is defined as a, in a coronal plane between the tibial tailor uh, joint line and the vertical line medially. So, uh, and then you do more segmentation. So you go all in the segmentation press, the process of the, of the tibia and the foot. You determine, you determine your, your cora, which is a little bit near the, the, uh, the center of the joint. And then you have to be sure that your osteotomy is in the mit metaphyseal bone. So you have a good bone healing. And the most important thing is on the medial side, if you turn it around, you always have a step off. So the step off can, can be too big. So sometimes you have to make a bigger curve or a smaller curve to correct for the, uh, for the step off on the medial side. So we try to predict our outcome, meaning that we print, actually we print the, uh, the devices, the, the bones out, we print them out in a, before, we, in a, before we start the osteotomy and then after the osteotomy. So we have predict outcome and then we make our guides 
we, we, one is a cutting guide and one is a reduction guide. So meaning if you, if you do it in real time surgery, you, you, you put your pins all in and the red pins are the reduction pins. So when you do your ostotomy and when you turn it around and all those red pins align, you know that your reduction is correct and you know that you have your, uh, uh, the, your outcome that you wanted to have. Then you put your reduction guide on top of it and you can fixate the bone. So that's what you, you see in real surgery. Uh, you see the uh, guide on top and how we do it is actually we go to the distal side, the proximal side and we glide it over. So we, we, we measure it on the, on, the, on the distal part. So if you glide it over, it gets snuck and you know uh, that you have the, the right position. And this goes on the operation table as well. So you get the, uh, the mal sterile on the operation table with the guide, so you can check it before you put it on the real bone. You put it on, you do your osteotomy, you replace your osteotomy, and when you put your reduction guide on top of it, so it doesn't move anymore, and then you put your plate on to, to stabilize the joint. So we did a, a, a 10 or 15 cases for the, uh, on the moment. They all healed with a uh, mean healing of four months. Uh, we had, didn't have any revision surgery for the moment with two year follow up. Um, and mostly we do remove the hardware after one year. So it's a powerful, the, the domus is a powerful correction to me. It's technical challenging. It's reproducible if you uh, use guides. Um, and the no novelty that we did is we use the uh, weight bearing CT scan because it's, a, it's more mimicking a clinical correct position than in a non-wearing CT scan. So that's